Death by Chocolate is a my very first cookbook that I got back in the 90s after watching the TV show hosted by the same author, Marcel de Sony, on the Learning Channel when it was actually still learning. Uh, before getting into the uh, cookie making, I'm going to actually start tempering chocolate with my sous vide machine, uh, immersion circulator, 115 Fahrenheit to actually melt the chocolate, and once it's melted, bring it back down to 81 Fahrenheit so that the uh, tempering and the crystals form inside of it. So, getting the ingredients ready, that's just all purpose flour and cocoa powder. And the nice thing about this book is that, in all his books actually, is that everything is done by weight. So everything it does come out pretty consistent because, yeah, as you know, a cup of flour is a cup of flour is not necessarily the same weight depending on the weather outside, the humidity, and all those and a few other factors as well. But uh, say 340 grams of flour is always 340 grams of flour. So sift that through, do that in double speed so that uh, not boring you with too much uh, prep. And take a spoon and mash, and mash some of the little clumps of, uh, of cocoa powder that invariably end up in there. I'm using Baker's chocolate here, the uh, unsweetened Baker's as well as the plain chocolate, and they're four ounce bars now. It used to be one ounce squares, which you needed a, pretty much needed a knife to cut through. And that's uh, but I like uh, what they've done in recent years by having these. Uh, my method is uh, to, act, to melt chocolate in the microwave is to uh, put it in a bowl, Corel Corningware, heat proof, and set it for two ounces under frost. It gives about a 41 second shot, and usually give it a couple of minutes in between shots and then multiple, mul multiple turning ons of the microwave to get it going. Uh, moving back to the um, tempering chocolate, it's, see that's melted at 115, and here I am fumbling with the interface of the ANOVA to get it down to 81 Fahrenheit and of course you gotta throw a bit of ice in here to speed up the speed up the uh, temperature drop. So yeah, it's starting to get a little sheen in there, so another shot at two ounces defrost and I think three or four time lapsed um, and now I've got this ice. The recipe calls for brown sugar, but I only have brilliant yellow this time. I've used a few different versions. I've used dark brown, it gives you much richer flavor, but either way, uh, I guess a yellow or brown sugar will do this cookie just fine. So creaming together the sugar and butter, and by the way, room temperature, softened butter, uh, difference between winter and summer are, are lots and there's a lot of, there's a big difference between winter and summer and being winter now it's it's a lot more solid than it would be if it was summer where it'd be pretty much stick your finger into it and it, it uh, collapses and now we add eggs I add eggs to the mix and with a bit of more editing Fast forward after the first egg is put in. I'm trying to keep in mind that I should have uh, scraped down the sides of the bowl, but I didn't. KitchenAids are also really nice machines. This is an older one again from the early 90s before they, before they got much cheaper. And from what I hear, plastic gear in the uh, in the head as opposed to the metal. And vanilla. I believe the recipe had a specific amount, but I have worked with stuff quite a lot, so I'm just going to eyeball it. And you know what? Vanilla is something that you can add a bit more of than what a recipe calls for, and it's not going to adversely affect the taste, and especially with chocolate. Vanilla and chocolate are two very complementary flavors. And just pouring the melted chocolate in, scraping as much as I can from the bowl. It's uh, very sticky stuff. We got wonderful dark chocolate mix of plain and unsweetened. Back in the mixer goes, and a good mixing. And of course, the scraping down afterwards. Now I added this, added the, added the dry ingredients, and I actually put the uh, put put the mixer down. I tried to do it, and I ended up with a bit of a cloud of uh, 
sugar, uh, flour and cocoa powder, so I brought it back up and added that out and did a bit of mixing by hand just to incorporate enough so that you don't get too much of a uh, cloud of a cloud. And now for the absolute dark portion by adding chocolate chips. Almost two pounds of it went into this. And now uh, between my wife and myself for the his and hers baking sheets. Hers, my wife's got the uh, got the uh, Teflon coated one but as of course over time Teflon breaks down and anyways we've since then moved on to these nice large 18 by 12 big uh, uh, parchment sheets uh, grab the uh, one tablespoon ice cream scoop and make little balls and by the way these one tablespoon ice cream scoops come from a uh, a restaurant supply store I believe it's I believe the one near me is Nella and again, through the magic of editing, the uh, uh, 20 minutes or so of baking and 10 minutes of cooling on the rack have been edited out, and I'm going to now take the bag of tempered melted chocolate and drizzle over top. Now, uh, given the recipe has about a teaspoon of salt in it, it does kind of come across as a salted a salted chocolate cookie and and depending and depending if I and actually I've done this with uh, kosher salt which doesn't break down as nicely as um, as the as the table salt iodized table salt every now and again you get uh, I've, in the previous batches I've done you get nice little crunch little crunchy texture of uh, salt amongst the sweet but uh, here with the table iodized table salt it uh, it seems to add an overall saltiness to it that uh, I think complements the chocolate quite well. And of course that's just only like a third of a batch of uh, cookie batter that I have. And here is the photo finish comparing my tray of baked cookies to the photo that was taken for the recipe book. Enjoy.